Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you guys know, I absolutely love the Mazda's new three-row and two-row SUVs in the form of CX-90 and CX-70. I have the CX-70 this week again, but I am especially impressed by this particular version of the CX-70, which is a plug-in hybrid. And I talked about the other 3.3-liter uh, inline six-cylinder engine CX-70s and CX-90s in the past. So take a look at those reviews if you haven't done so yet. But this week, I want to focus on the plug-in hybrid. And this thing is absolutely a marvel of engineering with many interesting things in terms of what's happening behind the scenes. So let me give you seven reasons why I believe this one is the best engineered plug-in hybrid in North America. Let's go. Welcome back. So why do I think that the Mazda CX-70 plug-in hybrid is the best engineered plug-in hybrid in North America, maybe even in the world? Well, I'm going to give you seven specific reasons. And many of them are similar to why I also claim that the Mazda CX-70 in the regular gasoline version are the best engineered SUVs, period. I talked about that in one of my previous videos, so take a look at that. And also keep in mind that the CX-70 and the CX-90 are both literally identical. Even the powertrains are the same but uh, this one has two rows of seat and CX-90 has three rows of seat. So they're basically twins and I'm not sure why Mazda decided to have a different name. So that is a bit confusing, but think of them as literally identical models. I do like the CX-70 um, better because I don't need a third row. And I do feel like this one is a little bit more agile just because it's also a lighter vehicle due to two row versus three row. But coming back to my first point as to why I believe this is the best engineered plug-in hybrid in North America is the fact that this is built in Japan as you can see with a J which is the first letter in the VIN here and it's built in the Hofu plant in Japan which is about an hour away from Hiroshima where the master head office is located. I've been to that factory quite a few times. I made a number of videos about that plant so again take a look at that as well. But the Hof plant is perhaps one of the most advanced plants in the world. It has a truly agile and flexible manufacturing system that no one else seems to be using, allowing many different models to be produced in the same factory with a very high quality and high precision. And because I've been to that factory so many times, I do believe that this thing is so well engineered and so well manufactured. In fact, there's not too many Japanese brands that are selling uh, three-row or two-row SUVs in North America that are built in Japan anymore. I think Mitsubishi Outlander is still built in Japan, but pretty well everything else from all the other brands, Honda, Nissan, Toyota, Lexus, they're all built in North America now. So if you do want something that's built in Japan, well, there's not too many choices, but this is one of them. The second reason why this thing is so well engineered is because of the manufacturing quality behind it. I'm going to declare, as I did for CX-90, that this one has one of the highest precision in terms of sheet metal manufacturing, in terms of panel fit, and panel alignment among all the vehicles that are sold in the world. I'll show you why. This is only 2.7 millimeter here, uh, 2.9 here. This is also 2.8 millimeters and 2.9 and 2.9 millimeters. When was the last time uh, where I was able to show you a gap of less than three millimeters? Well, even Lexus models built in Tahara are about three millimeters, maybe 2.9. But other than these factories, the master factory and the uh, Toyota Tahara plant, I don't think anyone else is capable of producing cars with a sheet metal that has less than three millimeter in gap. Perfect fit, perfect alignment. The gap is consistent. You can run your hand through and you'll be astonished how good the fit is. Go and try it at your local Mazda dealership run your hands through here, take a look at the fit, and try the same thing with another car somewhere else in the lot, and you're going to be shocked how well built it is. Everything lines up, the paint quality is almost perfect, not too much uh, orange peel, which is a good thing because many Japanese brands do have a lot of orange peel, but not this one, and absolutely, absolutely perfect manufacturing quality. The third thing I wanna point out is how the Mazda engineers have worked behind the scene to come up with something quite extraordinary that no one else has done. And one of them is called this zebra effect. And what it is that they designed the panel, both from engineering perspective and the manufacturing perspective so that you get these beautiful lines that almost kind of mimics something that's artistic. You get this zebra effect, which is layers and layers of lines that come through over here. It goes into this kind of special pattern and you can see it over here as well, there's more layers this way, layers that way. 
Not quite sure if you can see it clearly on the um, camera there, but again, no one else in the world will bother engineering the panel in such a way that the light will reflect this way with this kind of pattern that comes through here and here. Why would they do that? That just seems like such a hassle to engineer this in this meticulous way, but mass engineers have done it, giving you that zebra look, which I think is beautiful because as a car sometimes passes through the light, I can see this reflection comes and goes and gives that really amazing feel that no other brands, no other automakers have bothered doing in the past. And the reason why some of these tolerances are so tight, they designed the machining process and the fixtures and jigs, that's what we call them, so that everything fits tightly and they make final adjustments so that the panel will align properly. Again, no one else will bother doing it so that these alignments are this good. And I dare you to compare this to other competitors. Even go to Lexus dealership, take a look at the RX or go to Infiniti or BMW. No one will be able to match the quality of the Mazda in terms of the gap alignment and also the paint job, which is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, by the way, I do pronounce it kind of Mazda, which is a Canadian way. I know in the US it's kind of Mazda and Japan is Mazda. So there are three different ways to uh, describe the Mazda uh, nameplate. But for me, I'm going to stick with the Canadian method. But anyway, that's the third reason why this thing is engineered so well. The fourth point is all to do with the interior in terms of the fit and finish, the engineering of the panels and the materials. Once again, it's a class or two above other cars in this price range, maybe even better than Lexus Infiniti and Acura in some way. Uh, because of the way they've engineered everything so well. So for example, this is all soft plastic in most uh, modern vehicles now. This is all hard plastic, including the Lexus. And even the door is also got a little bit of a soft touch. So you can tell that it is just a nice finish compared to Lexus, which are all using hard plastic as well. Uh, and then you got different mixture of uh, materials. Some are satin, silver, kind of a mixture of different uh, patterns here as well. Nice stitching that goes all the way. Uh, beautiful leather finish. Just the whole thing is so well designed and engineered that you would not think this is affordable to roll SUV. It honestly, it looks like something that came out of a um, $100,000 or $150,000 vehicle. It looks better than most of those cars costing at that price range. Uh, I think the ergonomics are also excellent. All the buttons are still there. Switches are there, good tactile feel. I will say I'm not too crazy about the shifter. It's kind of odd to go left and right to go from park into drive. And I'm not too crazy about the fact that this is not a touch panel. Until you hook up the Apple CarPlay, then it converts it into part touch, which means that you can actually navigate some of it using touch, but some of it is locked up as well. So this is odd, even though there's nothing wrong with using the dial here uh, because it is actually well designed. I still prefer the normal touch panel and I wish that Mazda did that by bringing this a little bit closer, making it bigger and making it more intuitive. So that's one criticism. But other than that, the interior is well designed, well engineered and looks really expensive. The fifth reason is all to do with driving character because this thing drives like a no other large two or three row SUV. It has a beautiful steering feel, a beautiful handling. Um, because Mazda actually takes the time to engineer a proper feeling and feedback on the steering, uh, which no one else seems to bother doing these days. Most SUVs are too light, too numb, and they lack any kind of feeling or a feedback. But for Mazda CX-70, and it also applies to CX-90, Mazda designed it so that the steering feels almost like a hydraulic power steering from the past versus electric power steering. Even though it is electric power steering, you get a proper feedback, uh, lots of good um, road feel, and therefore you know exactly which way is pointed. It just drives beautifully. I think it is sportiest SUV in this price range, or even if you compare the more expensive models from a Lexus Infiniti or Acura, this thing is far more fun to drive because it has a proper feel to it. And I wish that other brands would take the time to engineer a proper feel to it, but they don't bother doing it. Only Mazda has, has done this and it really shows because the CX-70 along with the CX-90 is just quite a fun vehicle to drive despite the fact that they are so big. It is just really a joy to drive and this is definitely one of the biggest strengths of the CX-70 and CX-90. And even though it's a plug-in hybrid, 
with a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine, four cylinder, made it to hybrid system. It can accelerate in a remarkable fashion and it feels very peppy. In fact, it accelerates almost as fast as a 3.3 liter inline six cylinder, which is a much bigger engine. So they've done a great job of bringing the hybrid system together with a 2.5 to create a sensational driving environment for such a large SUV. The sixth point I want to bring up is the fact that this thing can be driven fully in electric mode, which means that you save tremendous amount of uh, gas because you don't really have to use the gas if you don't want to, as long as you keep topping it up. It has 42 kilometers of range, which is 26 miles, which is sufficient for everyday driving. It uses a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with electric motor, as I mentioned earlier. And the transition from fully electric to hybrid is actually very natural. It doesn't feel out of place when it's shifting once you run out of the electric range. In any case, because you can drive it in a fully electric mode, as long as you keep topping up the electricity, you save a lot of gas. And because it is designed differently from other hybrid systems, which I'll talk about a little bit later, I think in terms of engineering, this plug-in hybrid is one of the best systems out there. The seventh point I want to talk about is the fact that I actually prefer the plug-in hybrid version of the CX-70 compared to the turbocharged six-cylinder engine. Even though those are the high output versions, and they have, at least on paper, very promising numbers. I actually prefer the plug-in hybrid because overall I think the NVH, which is noise, vibrations, and harshness, and the overall refinement is better in the plug-in hybrid version of the CX-70 compared to the normal inline six. I just feel like it's smoother transition, it drives well, and it's partly because the, um, the hybrid system is a parallel system and so the transmission is still shifting even when you're driving in a fully electric mode, which is unique to Mazda. Uh, other companies don't do that, including Toyota and Lexus. And therefore it feels more natural. It feels more like um, driving in the normal gasoline version, even when you're driving in the fully EV mode. And that's something that's unique to this model. And I really feel like this is the better balanced vehicle compared to the inline six. And like I said before, I prefer the 670 over the 690 just because it's tad lighter and therefore it feels just a bit sportier as well. As I begin to conclude, I do want to bring up one more very important point, which is the maintenance of this CX-70 plug-in hybrid. I know there has been some complaints about the gasoline version of the CX-70 and CX-90 because everything is crammed tight in the engine compartment and access to components seems to be very difficult. So for example, timing chain is in the back of the engine and to access it, you might have to take the engine out. And that's been one of the biggest criticism that people talk about for both the CX-70 and CX-90 series. But I want to bring up a couple of things. One is that the engine is crammed to the back because this is using a rear wheel drive platform versus front wheel drive platform. And that's pretty well the same for all other brands that uses the same basic system such as BMW, which is a rear wheel drive bias. They're all crammed to the back because of the way that um, the vehicle has to be engineered for that purpose. And therefore it's not uncommon to have the timing chain kind of stuck right behind the engine and it's very hard to ac access. Now the timing chain is supposed to last almost a lifetime, 150 to maybe even 200,000 miles. So unless you're keeping the car for many, many years, you don't have to change it. And in fact, it might last even longer than that. So it's not an issue from my perspective as an engineer. And if you really have to take the engine out, it's honestly not a big deal. It's about one hour of labor to pull the engine out about the same as taking a dash apart. And if you know how to do that, it's really not a big deal. So that's one thing I do want to address. But also the plug-in hybrid version does not have that problem. The timing chain is actually in the front and you can access it easily. There's lots of space because the engine is much smaller being a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. Even though there's a hybrid system there, there's a lot of space to access everything. So it's not an issue with the plug-in hybrid in terms of accessibility. And that's why I also recommend the plug-in hybrid version for that reason. If you're really concerned about maintenance and ease of maintenance for the other CX-70 or CX-90 series. So overall, I can't say enough about the plug-in hybrid version of the CX-70. It's fun to drive. It has a good character. It's well manufactured with super high uh, advanced manufacturing behind it to produce one of the best quality products in the world. It's reasonably priced. And even though it is a reasonably priced, it's designed to look like expensive vehicle. 
maybe in some cases better than Lexus or Infinity or Acura, even though those are luxury brands and this one is not. So for many reasons, this thing ticks all the right things for me. So if I were to buy a three or two row SUVs in this price range, the Mazda CX-70 and CX-90 definitely fits into my category of the best buys. And specifically, I love the CX-70 plug-in hybrid. I think that's the best one to buy. And I'm kind of curious what you think of my advice or my comments and my recommendations. Uh, let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear from you. Also, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well? Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.